16 days of activism against gender violence is uh, currently underway and many of us think domestic violence could never be a part of the top echelons of society. But the reality is it affects absolutely everyone. Doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, whether you have money or not. Jacina Michelle, daughter of uh, Mozambique's first president, Samora Michelle, and Grasa Michelle, went through this ordeal, resulting in her being blinded in one eye. She will be a part of a panel discussion entitled Istunzi Sabafazi, The Dignity of Women, Building a Caring Society. It's taking place at the University of Johannesburg's Soweto campus on the 29th of November. This is all just a part of a build-up towards the Global Citizen Festival that's happening on Sunday. Josina Michelle is uh, an activist. She's founder of the Kutlaka movement, and she's here with me in studio. What a pleasure to have you. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you for having me. You know, this... That, that, this story is something that I, you know, nobody wants to talk about, but you have become exceptionally vocal about it and have helped a lot of people. So let's just get into it. Domestic violence affected you very, very badly. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes. Um, you know, I worked in the area of women empowerment for quite some time, and um, I had been um, involved in campaigns around the issue of gender-based violence and so on, but I never actually imagined it could happen to me mm. until uh, on a particular night in October 2015, um, the, my then partner decided to use his hands on me, and he gave me uh, three huge blows to my face and the second one landed right on my eye and he just burst the eye right there and then. Um, and then the third one, I got it at the back of my head and um, I just had to run out of the car running for my life, literally. Um, and uh, after that, um, or rather at that particular moment, I started a whole journey of that every woman that goes through domestic violence goes through is, yeah. you know, going to hospitals, going to court, going to the police and so on. And I experienced um, such level of, um, you know, it was just non-attention. It mm. was no, it was just a very blasé issue. And I realized that, listen, this is the way women are treated every single day. You know, at the time when you really most need yeah. attention, you need attention from doctors, from social workers, from, um, from, from the police and from the courts. But it's like all of a sudden you become a second-hand citizen um, with an injury or with um, a situation, you know, in a pain that no one really wants to deal with. Yeah. And I, I thought to myself, no, if... If I am um, Josina, and this happened in Mozambique, and I had the platform and my family had the respect that it had, and I was treated this way, where even my files disappeared in a hospital, my files disappeared at the police. As he went to court, you know, it kept on disappearing. I would put something, it would disappear. And I thought to myself, if this is happening to me, then what happens to imagine? women, yeah. you know, to Joanne, to Mary, whoever it is in this country? And that's when my activist voice actually came because I said to myself, no, I will, uh, you know, as long as I live, I will not be silent to this and I will not accept that women have to go through this. And it, it blows my mind. I mean, you, you, you're telling me this and, and exactly what you're stating is going through my mind, but you are the former president's daughter. He is highly respected, put on a pedestal. Your mother is Grasa Michelle. You are Jacina Michelle. And yet, you are still treated that way. Yes. And the justice system failed you, if I'm not mistaken. It I did. Mean, this, this man, yes, he paid. Did he pay you your money, by the way? No. He's never paid the money and he's never served time. No, he never served time and he didn't pay the compensation at all. And uh, actually, in fact, one of the things that happened, he was arrested for some time because he was owing money to the state. Um, but then so through that's what he got into trouble for? Kind of got into trouble for three months. And then after that, he was released, actually. Um, and the domestic violence law in Mozambique was actually tainted. You know, they changed a certain clause to allow this person to come out. So, you know, it's, it's been a journey of, of intense activism, um, but most of all is discovering really how women 
are treated yeah. by mm. and, and are treated and are failed mm. in our courts and in, in our other institutions. So that's the kind of work that I do is highlighting this and creating um, spaces for women to be respected, to yeah. be validated, and to have their stories um, heard. Heard and told and, and hopefully find some help. What I want to ask you, though, and, and it's something that many women do speak about, were there signs? I mean, you talk about that one night, but, yeah. but there must have been other nights, other occasions. Or was that? What <laughs> happened? Were the signs not there? No. <laughs> there were no signs. Had the signs been there, I would not have been at that kind. You would have left. I would, I would have left. So the signs were that there. was that time, and you were with him for three years? It was, yeah, two, three years, two, yes, three around years. that. No, the signs were not there. And that is why um, when the beating starts, instead of me protecting myself, because normally if you know the signs, you know you need to protect yourself and so on. I was so unprepared for it that I actually turned my face towards him and I asked when I got the first blow, I looked and I said, what? And that's when I get the second blow because I was literally moving towards him and the second blow was coming and that's where it hit I. Um, but it was the unpreparedness. I think, you know, looking back three years later and working uh, with women, you know, who have gone through what I've gone through yeah. um, and also trying to understand the mind of the perpetrator, if it's ever possible, um, one of the things that I look at is perhaps there was a, an attempt of control. Perhaps that I can look back and say maybe there were some attempts of trying to be very controlling, um, wanting to know where I am and blah, blah, blah. But it was that. Yeah. It was that. Yeah. Nothing, Nothing much. Nothing else. Nothing you know, much. I mean, through all of this, you do so much work. You, you, you become a voice for a lot of women that are in your situation or that were in your situation, but, and there are far too many of them. There's now a big discussion that's taking place. Um, Oprah Winfrey will be a part of this, and so will your mum, Grasa Michelle. Talk to us just a little bit about this panel and sort of the things you're hoping to get out of it. Um, you know, this is the year in which we are celebrating Papa's 100th um, anniversary. I mean, not, yes, anniversary. Yeah. And um, as, as Kutluka, um, the organization that I lead, we kind of um, started thinking what would be befitting, what it is that we could do in the area that we work on, um, of course, wanting to give visibility to this, to this challenge. Um, and so we, we engaged the Grasa Marshall Trust, we engaged the Nelson Mandela Foundation, um, and say, okay, we need to work together and highlight this issue, this challenge that we're facing as a society, this crisis rather. And we thought um, that Miss Winfrey would be perhaps one of the biggest representatives, yeah. um, you know, the best uh, representatives of women who have gone through abuse but have triumphed. You know, the, the, that abuse did not, does not classify, define her. doesn't define her. Yeah. Um, and she's gone way above. I mean, she's as successful as it is. And that's what we want to show to women in general that, yes, you are a victim, but from victim, you can become a survivor and you can, you can overcome it. Yeah. And so we are going to be discussing around caring societies, because what we need right now is to develop, it's not to develop, but it's to engender uh, caring and just societies. And that means not just expecting the institutions to do work, but we as individuals, what do we do on a daily basis to ensure that we eliminate gender-based violence? And in cases where we still can't do that, at least what kind of society do we create that you know takes care of its survivors, um, protects survivors, but at the same time deals with perpetrators? And that comes from prevention, to mitigation. Exactly. And so we need to, 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 as society, we've done that. You know, South Africa has done that successfully when it dealt with apartheid. Yeah. Everybody was committed and said, you know what, we, we're not going to deal with this. We're not going to allow this to continue in our lifetimes. Yeah. And this is what the same position that we need to do when it comes to gender based violence. Jacina, I could keep talking to you all day. In fact, I could close my eyes and I feel like I'm talking to your mother. That's how, that's how much it is. But what a pleasure to have you here in studio. Thank you for telling your story, for your bravery. And uh, I, I will be at this panel discussion. I cannot wait to hear it and, um, and to just be, be moved by what you're doing and the rights of women that you're fighting for. Jacina Michelle, activist, founder of the uh, Kukluka movement uh, and uh, talking to us about her ideal, her, her ordeal, I beg your pardon, with domestic abuse. We take a break and uh, we say goodbye to you after this. Do stay tuned.